Hello, my name is David Finney and I am a Big Fix Technical Advisor based out of Denver, Colorado. In this video, I'll be continuing my video series on Big Fix Remote Control with uh, remote control targets and their configuration and ultimately performing a remote control session. Before we begin, the QR code at the bottom of the screen will prompt an email or you can see my email address just below my name. So if there are any questions about what I've covered, I'll be happy to follow up with you. Remote control targets are available for Windows, Mac, and Linux systems. You start by sending out the target software to them, and then after that, the configuration is needed to get them checking into the remote control server. We are going to start there, and once we get that far, we will make a few changes to the server level, install the remote control controller software on the uh, server hosting the remote control server software, and then we will go ahead and try to get a remote control session going. Okay, for those of you that were uh, there to watch uh, my prior video about standing up the server, um, I was just gonna call this out real quick just because I think it makes a big difference. Um, so you probably remember this. Uh, I just kind of wanted to show you this real quick. This is just a log on to the actual remote control uh, server itself. Um, and the reason why I'm showing you this is just to show you the reason why I was saying that we probably want to go ahead and uh, use a different browser. So you can see how IE is working here. Um, now let's basically just pull up the same thing on Chrome, right? So I just uh, went ahead and I reset the home page to go uh, directly there on this uh, locally installed Chrome. And you can see the difference, right? Um, so you can see a lot more options there, uh, a lot more capability, so a lot better the way of the uh, representation of the entire data is there. And uh, so I just wanted to kind of call that out real quick before we begin. Okay, switching gears. Um, I just jumped over to my Big Fix root server. Uh, what I'm going to do now is I'm actually just going to actually send the Big Fix target software. Uh, so I'm going to go ahead and find that. I'm going to send it to a couple of Windows targets. See, it's pretty pretty well applicable, um, and I'm basically going to be sending it against, uh, well, just about everything there, actually. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and actually send it out to these systems here, and this will give us what we need to go ahead and start doing the configuration piece. And so I'm just going to go ahead and let that go. Um, I'm going to go ahead and actually jump over to our next part here, which is actually building out some uh, configuration pieces as well. So uh, basically what I, what I usually do there, I'm just gonna show you from a couple different levels, there's a couple different ways to get to this, but uh, usually what I like to do is I like going through the actual uh, wizards themselves. So back over and underneath all content, and then the uh, tree as you see here. And uh, what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna use your remote control target wizard. Now, uh, basically the way that this works, um, now, like I said, I'm going to do this very, very, very high level, so I'm not going to be doing things like uh, configuring brokers uh, or anything to that effect right now. I'm just going to go ahead and do a basic uh, setup to this. And so what I'm going to do real quick here is I'm actually going to grab the URL off of uh, this system here. So what I'm actually going to grab is actually I'm going to grab all of this right here. We're gonna go ahead and put that over to our clipboard. I jump back over to my uh, root server and we're gonna use that right here. And so just double check that came over the way I expected. Looks good. Uh, like I said, not doing a broker list right now. Um, we're not doing any registering and target groups. I kind of just wanted to fall into the system real generically at the moment. Um, you could have the option of doing peer-to-peer. -peer. Um, I actually typically avoid that just because it usually dodges some of the accounting that I like to see. Uh, you'll see some follow-up to the uh, FIPS, NIST. Uh, again, I'm going to be shooting extremely high uh, just to go ahead and try to get uh, just kind of a high-level understanding as to how this is going to work. Um, so these are the different modes. Now, they have monitor mode, guidance mode, active mode. Monitor mode is, you know, basically um, kind of uh, the, the best way I could say is kind of eyes over the shoulder, you know, just kind of just seeing exactly what's going on in the system. Guidance mode is uh, what I kind of call the quarterback mode. Um, Basically, you can highlight things, you can circle things, you can put uh, arrows to things, um, make it so it's really nice to uh, kind of guide a user. Uh, it's good for training. Active mode is kind of what you would see for traditional. Um, so that basically means, you know, I'm able to interface with the system. Uh, I'm able to do, well, just about any, anything a typical remote control software should do. 
Um, you do also have the ability to do chats, file transfers. Uh, these are all the settings that kind of control that. Um, I'm going to go ahead and turn off local recording uh, for now. Collaboration means you have more than one person there. Uh, allow handover, um, which that is basically confirming incoming connections and saying, hey, I want you to, you know, change hands as to who's running it. Uh, let's see here. Going from that, there's uh, options for pre and post execution scripts. Uh, reset console after RDP consoles. Well, I'm going to keep that as an ever. Um, I'm going to go to the top here. I'm actually going to make this, um, I, I kind of call this the kick in the door method. And uh, what that means is that I'm basically turning off most of the uh, the settings just to get us a good good test out there to not allow us to have anything that would get in our ways in terms of confirmations. Um, so I'm going to turn off all the confirms because if I turn them off, that means I can go ahead and just have that happen. Um, so basically what's going to happen here is, um, you know, that should make it so that when we initiate a remote control session, it should allow us to go ahead and just begin it without any uh, user acceptance or anything else. Now, granted, like I said, this is just um, a, a beginning strategy. There's uh, obviously a lot of logic to enable those controls, um, which you can see where we could do that. I'm just going to start at a high level here. Um, all right, so just basic authentication pieces. Um, you obviously have a lot of capability to do a lot of that. Uh, privacy and input lock is pretty handy um, for doing some endpoint administration. Uh, very, very high level. I'm just going to enable some high level uh, or high quality colors here. And I think it looks good. So I'm going to go ahead and uh, create this task. Now, this is the task that actually ultimately controls uh, how the configuration is on those uh, targets. Um, so usually for a beginning here, I'll usually just uh, keep it nice and high level. So I'm just going to put a date on this real quick. And you can kind of see the actions that are going on here, but this is just going to create the task. So this is going to take a minute for it to become relevant to those targets that I just sent out there. So I'm going to stop the recording for a little bit and wait for those uh, systems to show up. Okay, a few minutes have gone by, and as you can see, we've got some... Uh, relevance to those systems there that we just created that uh, task for. So I'm going to go ahead and actually take action on this and we're going to send it out to these systems here. And we're going to go ahead and let that complete. Now I'm going to jump over and I'm going to go ahead and install our remote control controller uh, at the same point here. And uh, so what I'm going to do here, I'm going to go to the deployment area here and I'm going to find our controller, which is this guy here. Like I said, I'm just going to install this for now on our compliance server, which is where we actually have the remote control root server. Or I'm sorry, just the remote control server there. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and send that there just so that we can use that a little later on. So I'll let that complete. I'll let those configuration, configuration items go ahead and roll out. And uh, I'll bring you back in after that has a little time to run.